Are you new to metallic watercolors or just on the lookout for some easy watercolor painting ideas? Because in this video, I'm going to show you a few simple gold colored watercolor paintings and techniques you can use to create your own personal artwork. Welcome back to another episode of Art on a Thursday, where we get creative every single Thursday here on this channel. Whenever I try out a new art medium or technique, I usually start out with something super simple like drawing different lines or mixing an interesting background with different colors, just to see how the medium works and to get the feeling for it just a little bit before moving on to something more complex. And that's what I did here. For the first art piece, I just wanted to play around with different gold colored lines on a dark background. I used grey blue colored watercolors and distributed it evenly all over the paper to create a flat wash. And while this was drying, I used a different technique for the second painting. Here I distributed a little bit of water all over the paper first and then applied different blue shades on top and made them blend into each other. And while the paint was still wet, I added a little bit of gold colored watercolors on top to a few areas. Here I used the Kumorebi set that I mentioned in my testing video. As you can see, the paint shoots right into the wet paint and pushes the blue paint kinda away and that's good to know for your future artwork so you can plan it out a little bit. And the fun part about watercolors is that you can build it up in layers to create different effects and more intense colors. And that's what I did when everything was completely dry. I just used the same colors for both art pieces and repeated the steps. And by doing that, I realized that my brush was not completely clean from the golden watercolors. So when the dark blue colored background was dry, you could see that it got a little bit of a streaky golden layer on top. And this is also good to know for how to use your brushes in your artwork, if it would be better to use a separate brush for metallic colors or maybe to look into how to clean your brushes better. The point that I'm trying to convey is that it's okay if you quote unquote ruin something during the process or if something doesn't turn out the way you thought it would turn out. Because there's always a lesson that will help you become better at what you're doing. And that's basically how life works and that's why I find it's important to work on this mindset even when you are just painting or working on an art piece. At the end of the day, it's just a piece of paper with a little bit of paint on top. If we already beat ourselves up when something looks bad in our eyes, how can we deal with something more serious in our lives? So I believe in embracing the process, embracing the moments when you learn something new that can help you become better and to evolve as a person. Even if it's just about your painting, you never know how it might help you in your life along the way. But let's go back to the actual painting. So for the first art piece, as I said earlier, I wanted to play around with different metallic lines, which is why I went ahead and painted a simple feather of a peacock. You can of course choose anything that you like, I just wanted to paint something that I have never painted before. I like this exercise because it not only allows you to test out the metallic paint, but it also helps you to practice on creating lines while working on your hand and brush control. As always, I will have all my art supplies in the description box down below if you want to check it out. Here I played around with different thicknesses and different shades of my metallic paint and just added a few random dots here and there to just add a little bit more sparkiness, I guess. But this is optional, of course. Now for the second art piece, I wanted to test out something new as well that I just recently discovered and that's modeling paste. As you might know, with acrylics or oils, you can create really thick texture and with watercolors, you can really do that. And this is why I was so curious to test out this medium. So at first I lined out a moon and a few stars that I wanted to paint and then used a spatula to apply the paste onto the paper. Now the tricky part here is that this paste is a little bit difficult to apply if you want to paint something rather intricate because you kind of want to push it down onto the paper and sometimes if you use just a little bit of the paste, the paste can get stuck on the tool. So I kind of switched between my spatula, silicone brushes and my fingers just to figure out what works best. And the cool thing about it is that once the paste has dried, it really gets stuck on the paper and creates a really nice three-dimensional shape that you can cover with paint later. 
And that's what I did here. Once I covered everything inside my outlines, I let it dry for a bit and then started painting it using my gold color paint. And I think it's really cool for something you might want to hang up your wall or as a gift. Now from here I decided to make the background slightly darker so I added another layer of paint all around the moon and the stars. But personally I kinda liked my previous version but that's okay, I will know it better next time. I think it would have been nicer if I just kept some of the blue light colors and then just added a little bit of darker shades here and there but that's the whole purpose of testing and playing around with your art supplies. And that's what I did with my two other art pieces. Here I created a dark wash of the same grey blue color that I have used earlier but made sure that my brush is super clear, no metallic residue whatsoever. And for the painting on the right side I just kept a really light layer of blue and a little bit of gold color paint without making the background too dark again. And what I wanted to do now is to kind of figure out how the value of the color in the background can make a difference in the whole painting. So on the left we have a very dark value of a grey blue color and on the right a very light value of blue. And as you can see, when I create both pieces is that the metallic color looks so bold and really shiny on top of a dark background so I can imagine to use this technique for details or objects in my artwork that I really want to make stand out in the whole painting. So maybe specific lines, shapes or just something that is important in the specific art piece to really make the contrast stand out. And if I just want to create very soft background or a soft pattern in my painting, for example a pattern in a dress, I would rather go for a light value of a certain color so the metallic color either doesn't distract or of something that might be important in the foreground or becomes more one with the surrounding. That's why I believe that when you are not familiar with something just yet, it's totally okay to do simple tests, to look online for inspiration, what other artists do, just to get an idea what is possible and to play around with it. Even if you just play around with different lines, shapes and paint something super simple, slowly but surely you will develop your own unique ideas how to use a certain tool or in this case a certain color. If you want to take your art to the next level, I have a short playlist for you guys right here where you can check out all sorts of simple watercolor painting techniques that can help you level up your painting game. Thank you so much for watching guys, have a wonderful day and I will see you soon. Bye!